All right, still ahead on the early edition of AMHQ. Big Rig Week continues as we do river levels are beginning to lower in parts of Kentucky. We saw yesterday. I mean, it didn't takes. have a lot of no. punch to it, but enough, obviously. It doesn't, and so that's what we always try this morning. Th that's so random, too, you know, like right. how they also do. <laughs> All right, we want to talk about a disruption in the food supply chain in the wake of an historic winter invasion that will have you weatherproofing your wallet. According to agriculture economy, as we get into the weekend. So um, if it is too hot for you, get ready. It'll it'll change by the weekend. Exactly. So let's talk about to us. Even if we get a little more snow out of the system that's here right now, it's not going to stick because we're nearly 60 tomorrow. What's going to happen with our pattern, though, as we get into next week? So we're going to see this ridge that's right now over the northern plains shift a little further to the east. That's how we warm up in the northeast. We'll see a trough digging across the west. This is a stormy pattern for us. And as we get into the middle of the week, we're going to be watching for a storm system, a strong low pressure building somewhere up here over the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, maybe the northern plains. And with it, we'll see rain. We'll see how far north that rain gets here simply because of the ridge building and the warmer temperatures. But on the back edge, some of you will get snow. Right now, it looks to be pretty far north, pretty far north for that. All right, Green Bay, we've got rain coming our way. Look at our temperature. Temperatures 58 degrees. It's rain. Then even when the front comes through, we do cool down, but the rain ends before the really cold comes in. So Tevin, it's not going to be snow in Green Bay at this point. Not we had hail and it was just a wild day for us here in rain finally, right? For some of you that hadn't seen rain in more than a month. Now in Orange, the city of Orange near our Los Angeles, we did pick up close to a half inch of rainfall. Not only did it rain, it came down. We picked up some rain too around San Diego along with that hail as well, that pea sized hail. Um, in needles. Uh, we saw 60 mile per hour winds not too far from Las Vegas. Very gusty winds all across this area. In fact, it caused some real low visibility at the Phoenix airport where we did have some delays yesterday and Mount Laguna gusted to 73 miles per hour. This was all because of an upper level low. And so we always say these things are never trustworthy, right? Yeah, they, they can often overachieve, but they can underachieve too. So we'll watch this one right now. It is spinning right over the southwest here watching from um, south of Salt Lake City in the mountains of the Wasatch down into the mountains of Arizona, like around Flagstaff. Some scattered snow showers there. The Southern Rockies are going to do quite well with some snow coming your way, so get ready. Uh, Grand Junction, probably not for us, but we go south and towards Gunnison and Telluride, Durango. We get into the snow today, Devin. All right, Jen, Jen well, let's talk about travel. Everyone to AMHQ early. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. And I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten. The spring showers, we cannot just seem to shake those. In fact, they're not shutting off anytime soon. In fact, we're not talking about just rain, Jen. We're also talking about some snow. Yeah. It's 30. We had the snow, the sleet, um, the ice. We had so much right here, but didn't add up that much. So we are running behind a little bit. We'll make that up a little bit tomorrow with some rain showers. Getting temperatures um, only in the 60s. We dropped to the 40s, back to the 60s. These days are going to feel so different. Friday, rainy, kind of raw, actually, the upper level low, the reason why it's raining um, coming on through. But then Saturday in the mid-60s, and the sun is back out again. So luckily, this is a pretty quick-moving system. We're not going to be stuck in this for days and days. Showers do move right along along the northern Gulf Coast as we get into Friday night. So from New Orleans to Mobile to Pensacola. I know this is spring break season kicking off. So for anyone heading south, you'll see Saturday showers out here. Looks like Destin starting to clear out. Still some showers around Panama City, but from Tampa down through Naples, um, Sanibel and Captiva, we've got some showers around here on Saturday. If you're planning to do any shell collecting, looks like actually Sunday will be the better day because we'll get these showers out of here by Sunday. Look at Orlando. This is a good example of what's happening in Florida as as we get to in, into this weekend, Saturday and Saturday night do look kind of crummy. We've got rain showers. Temperatures a lot cooler, mid 60s, especially compared to where we've been. This is a big deal. But by Sunday, the sun is back out. A really nice day, 68 and sunny, Tevin. All right, sounds like a perfect. Some slick spots. We still have snow coming down across this area. And we, we will for, you know, all March. Eight, it still snows in April here. Snowing in Buffalo right now, snowing in Syracuse right now. We've actually had a few more hours of snow in Syracuse than we have in Buffalo. Temperatures are below freezing. In fact, we're in the 20s in Syracuse. So watching for travel right along the New York State Thruway to be a little slick in spots and may not be the Thruway because I know it's well treated, right? But getting there is where you're going to run into some of the problems. Then we take you out here back parts of the Great Lakes. Um, we're doing fine for now here. We'll have to watch things as we get into next week. But for now, no major issues for you. Now we also watch for airport delays. The wind has been a factor for us, a lot of the major hubs. But for Syracuse, it is the snow and the lining up for de-icing and all those departure delays that come with it. With with it, Tevin. All right, Jenna, we'll Indoor farms come in all shapes and sizes. Some stack crops vertically, others spread out across vast greenhouses. But no matter how you grow it, these indoor farms are harvesting fresh produce and big investments. Our partners at Pattern have the story.
at this next weather system next week. The, the models have been different every day on exactly what they're doing with it, but showing signs of a pattern change. So we have a ridge that's going to start building east, a trough in the west. This is a stormy pattern for us here. And so we're going to see an area of low pressure form somewhere and then track up through the Great Lakes. As it does, it'll bring some rain. We'll see how far south the cold air gets. Where do we get the snowfall? Probably a lot of wind with it as well. We are expecting a decently strong low pressure. Chicago, look, case in point, we've got a windy forecast for you on Wednesday with rain coming in, temperatures in the 60s. Then we look at the front coming through and we do drop Friday's highs only in the 40s and still rain showers are going to be around, but not cold enough to get into any snow with that precip in place. Nashville, it is just rain. Rain comes in on Thursday and Friday of next week as we see uh, the temperatures continuing to uh, watch for um, upper 60s. Yeah, above average temperatures for you here. Again, it's because of that ridge that is building and we continue to watch here into the weekend, though. This sticks around for a while. It's a pretty slow pattern, so we keep the rain going into the weekend. Tevin. All right, Jen, above average temperatures there. Watch here our next storm system track on through. So we've got some showers coming away into Little Rock as we get into next weekend. This is all into next week. So this is next Wednesday where we do see the risk of showers. And I will tell you, this will probably change as we get into next week exactly who gets what and when for the timing of it. It, but there's signs definitely by next week with the pattern changing that we will see a storm system that spreads out. We see rain showers right now from the Great Lakes all the way down into parts of the lower Mississippi Valley. This is next Thursday. And then we do continue to watch for some rain in places that do not need it, like in Kentucky and West Virginia. But actually, we could take a little bit of rain in parts of the south here. We're running a little below average. Tevin? I've seen stories where people get trapped in their houses yes. by tumbleweeds, like all up. piled Two up. Stories. Yeah, just piled up because they stick together, right? They stay sort of like Velcro, right? They just stick uh, they together. Might take the tumbleweeds. I don't know how they, they get rid of you. those, frankly. Yeah, I don't know how you get rid of them. Pitchfork, uh, I guess, and just start digging pitch, out. Pitchfork. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, good. <laughs> that's good. Right? That's what you. What else are you gonna use? Uh, you need some thick uh, material on you though, and on your. Yeah. Room. I had one um, delivered here once. It was a work the weekend show. I was just curious what it was like, right? And there were so many problems with it. So the post office in, um, I think it was Oklahoma, sent us one. And I brought my garden gloves thinking that would be enough. No, they like pierce right through those. Hang on. You just wanted to see what makes sense. We had it on the show. <laughs> Maybe you guys remember that. It was like 10 years ago. Um, it was prickly. <laughs> All right. Let's do a little traveling. How about that? Um, it is rain showers blowing around, maybe some thunderstorms here, but it's going to be overnight. I think that you get any of those thunderstorms into parts of Oklahoma. The upper level low is the reason why. It's why we do have some snow showers in the mountains. And by the way, there could be a travel issue for you later on today. I-25 here for the evening commute south of Denver with the snow, but it's just rain showers. We may actually see a little bit of hail. That's possible if we get some thunderstorms going late tonight here into central Oklahoma. Steph and Jim. Woo. All right. Let's get an update on what's happening in Kentucky. Emergency managers say they'll work with FEMA to do both ice storm and flood damage assessment next week. The result could put federal disaster money in the pockets of homeowners with storm damage. New this morning, people are scraping away mud and drying out now, but high river levels are still creating a lot of anxiety. The, the, the Northeast will not be as lucky this weekend, but they too by next yeah, week yeah. will get to enjoy that. Yeah, it'll get to warm up. It doesn't stay cold forever. It doesn't stay warm no. forever either, though. No, that's, that's the true. thing. So enjoy this while you have it, right? If you have the spring fever, take advantage of it. Temperatures running above average. The ridge of high pressure, the reason why we see that all across the northern plains. These temperatures in North Dakota and South Dakota, just unreal, especially compared to what we were just a month ago, right? Temperatures here in uh, February were so far below average for the whole month. I mean, more than 20 20 degrees below average for the month. That's a big deal. Rarely happens um, to see that big of a departure. And now we've got temperatures starting off at 31 in Minneapolis, kind of balmy out there really for an early March morning and temperatures are going to be warming up right through the afternoon. So the ridge is the reason why we see this building again today right over this area, right across the northern plains, the upper Midwest. That's where it's going to be warm. Now across the northeast, we have the trough. We have the dip. That's why we're going to be below average up there. And, you know, we do have an active pattern coming into the northwest here, but we don't see a trough building in until next week there. So for now, we keep it above average in Montana, in North and South Dakota, Nebraska. Temperatures going to be running anywhere from 10 to 25 degrees above average, but then below average on the flip side there across the northeast. Let's get some specifics, though. How warm does it get, Steph?
So let's talk about the uh, warmth that is shifting into the plains as well. Month of February, we got some out of this guy, this upper level O, and this is now on the move and it's bringing some snow showers. You can see it's spinning around out here all across Utah, Colorado, northern New Mexico, northern Arizona. We'll zoom into where we are going to see some bigger amounts of snowfall. That's where the winter weather advisories are up. Now, it does include down here from Durango to Pagosa Springs, um, southward into New Mexico, and then on I-25, south of Denver, Castle Rock, down through Colorado, Colorado Springs, that's where we're going to get some bigger accumulations likely to call cause some travel issues because the timing is tough. It's about the like rush hour that you really get into it. So it's, it's not even a huge snowmaker, but it is enough that will, I think, cause some problems on the roadways. Denver will probably mix in with some snowfall. You can see the forecast for today. It takes until about five or six o'clock to see a changeover to all snow, and then it doesn't stick around too much longer. So we're not going to see a ton of snow in Denver out of this, and it's out of here by tomorrow morning. Now, once this upper level O moves out here into the plains, we've got the chance for some thunderstorms. This happens mainly overnight tonight, more than today, with possible hail as the main risk. We saw that hail in San Diego yesterday. Same upper level low on the move, so we'll have to watch out for that. A couple of showers will pop today in the Texas Panhandle, the northern part of it, very dry actually to the south. And then this is 11, 12 o'clock. You saw maybe a couple of these cells could produce some hail right here north of Oklahoma City. But again, not a big major. Uh, TV, yeah. and I'm just tearing up. Yeah. She goes, what is so, what are you crying for? I'm like, it's the pollen. It's the pollen. I'm not crying. It's actually yeah. the pollen. So it, it's, it's coming out in full force yeah. uh, and making its way onto the north and through here. Highest concentrations, uh, probably oak down yeah. in this part of the world. I had wondered right what would here. happen in Texas, you know, with the freeze and the snow Good and everything question. else. And, you know, Steph sent out a story about the blue bonnets might be a bit late this year because of all that. But in trees, what we're dealing with now is tree pollen, and they seem to be doing just fine. It, but the snow kind of protects, you know, it, yeah. the good news is we got snow with that cold, so yeah. it protects a lot of the vegetation. That's true, kind of like a blanket. Uh, but we still have phenomenal agricultural losses, by the way. That's yeah. another story. Anyway, forecast today, Atlanta 70. Uh, so we're right back up into it. Little Rock 70 as well. So a, a little bit nicer than yesterday, but still... Air's dry enough, yeah, so yeah. in the shade, yeah. it's still got a little crisp. There's actually to it. a red flag warning in Atlanta uh, today. The thing oh, wow. is, though, it's this is dry. like the perfect cocktail for these plants, right? A little bit of rain comes on through, and then the sun is back out again. Right. So, I mean, they're just growing like crazy. So Saturday's our wet day, but also yeah. cold day. Rain yeah. in the 50s in Jacksonville is no fun, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and even on Sunday and Monday, it's going to be chilly here. Yeah. The Yankees had a night game last night, and they were they were chilly last night when the sun goes down. There's not a lot of rain, though. The southeastern states, some of the spots no. actually that could use no. it. We've been a little below average here, so this maybe will be that'll keep our follow. growing at bay. <laughs> this will be interesting to follow as we get into spring, yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially if we start getting into drought and things like that. Yeah. So something to watch across the south. Speaking nice of spring, step. it is around the corner. Every day, I'm yeah. always like, there's a speck of dirt. I'm like, vacuum it up, <laughs> keep it clean. No cheese puffs. Um, yeah, no, no cheese puffs to my niece and nephews. <laughs> no cheese puffs. <laughs> this has happened this week, so that's why I'm saying it. All right, um, I want to talk about the Great Lakes. Watch this sheet of ice crumble into pieces. Do you see this? So it looks like a waterfall ice just cascading down it right this is harrison lake state park not too far outside of toledo in ohio it's a time of year when all things frozen begin to thaw as temperatures warm up and of course use extreme caution on any body of water you perceive to be frozen you need to be absolutely sure before you step out on the ice no doubt uh, if you have any doubt don't do it and this it always the ice gets very suspect this time of year but isn't that a neat thing to see just kind of breaking off and filtering down now temperatures have been warming so we've lost a lot of ice cover on the Great Lakes. Let's go back and take a look at where we are ice coverage wise. Oh, by the way, yesterday was Great Lakes Day. Somehow we missed that. So um, I don't know you say happy Great Lakes Day, but we, we missed that for you yesterday. Um, but here, you know, we did pop up in February with that cold snap here and got to average and even a smidge above uh, coverage of the ice it's dropped here significantly though. We're only at 14% now well below average again when it comes to ice cover temperatures warming up and we're going to see that expanding over the several days into the weekend right across the northern plains into the upper Midwest above average a lot of 50s and even some 60s and we've been warm. I mean, right, we've been warm the past couple of days, especially across the northern tier that air will be moving over the lakes as we get into next week. For now, we've been running a little below average, especially across the eastern lakes, but like 
Lake Superior, we've been warm and we're going to see that continuing as we get into your weekend. Watching these temperatures go up here into Minneapolis, close to 60. Bismarck, we will be in the 60s and Chicago warming up here as well. Temperatures hitting 52 degrees here. That's above average for us in Chicago. So going above average into the weekend, especially across the northern plains, you see how that now shifts as we get into Sunday, starting to warm up a little more into Wisconsin. So in terms of snow coverage across this area, um, yeah, we still have snow cover, snow pack out here, but it's going to keep shrinking. Watch this as we get all the way into next week, especially and we get those warming temperatures. Jim. Jeez, five days. Yeah. Gone. And in the Northeast, always remember Mother's Day is day to plant. That's always easier than remembering like your last day to freeze. Um, we do have temperatures that are going to be really cold tomorrow in the Northeast. So the 43 today in New York City, enjoy it tomorrow, which happens to be cheese doodle day. It's going to be cold, cold. Um, cheese doodles, oh, they make your hands orange forever, right? A little rain out there to wash that off across portions of the Mississippi Valley, but then it moves out pretty quickly. This upper level of scoots into Florida, into your Saturday, and then we get into your Sunday. Dry across most of the country. The Northwest is exception for the next system that comes on in. This morning we are shifting into spring. The warm up is bringing 70 degree temperatures all the way through the northern plains to the Canadian border. The warmth will also unfortunately help fire off some thunderstorms into next week. More than 124 million people will have highs above average. Look at this here. The warm temperatures building through the weekend ahead in eight minutes when the plains will feel the warmest weather of the year and why, unfortunately, the Northeast is actually going to be staying in the chill. Good Thursday morning and welcome to AMHQ. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams alongside meteorologist Jim Cantori and Jen Carfagno as we help you to get trucking through the work week. Speaking of trucks, first of all, it's big rig week here on the Weather Channel. A little later, a familiar voice will join us. But first, we're going to put our foot to the gas pedal here and talk about a coast to coast system that will rain on your weekend plans along the Gulf Coast and Florida started here Wednesday in California. It did bring showers and actually a little bit of hail as well. We saw pea sized hail in San Diego and the rain enough for the Golden State to cause some flooding. It's been really dry there and San Diego actually picked up 0.58 inches of rain and I looked it up. That's a third of what they get for the entire month on average. So that is going to cause some flooding. There were reports of standing water on I-15 and uh, I-8. Jim, this whole system is going to make its way through the Rockies and all the way down into Florida eventually. Could you imagine? You don't need a massive storm yeah. in order to have damage. You could just have one little thunderstorm over your house, and that's why it's so important to always watch the weather. So we have our northern branch of the jet stream causing a ridge, and then here's the trough. But we also have this southern branch of the jet stream that's carrying this low. It's not really cut off. It's really embedded in this southern jet that's coming across. And what that's all going to do is both of these will cause our low pressure to come into Florida and Louisiana. So you're wondering why it takes such a weird turn and goes south like that. It's because this energy from this dip in the jet stream, it's going to pull energy down and bring that system along with it. That unfortunately keeps the northeast cold and it keeps us rainy into portions of the south. Shreveport, Louisiana, we go from Friday rain in 66 to Saturday sun in 66. Fist bump of that. Now everything's elbow bump now, uh, actually, right? You don't do the fist bump even, you do the elbow bump. Um, but here's our low pressure. And you would think most of them kind of go up into the northeast, but because of the trough here, this energy is going to get forced down into the I-10 corridor from New Orleans to Apalachicola to Jacksonville. And as we take you a closer look into New Orleans, we also get the beautiful Saturday headed our way here after we get through some of that rain. But it does linger, unfortunately for some of us, into Florida, Jen. Yeah, for sure. Now, at our temperatures right now into the Northern Plains in the 20s and 30s. And that's really not terrible for this area, right? Especially this time of year. But we are going to see that warmth. Places like Wichita, 54 is our average high. We're going to be at 70. We're almost 20 degrees above average into Wichita. Still some cooler air. Look at the winds, too. North wind that brings in your cooler temperatures while we get a southerly wind and that's going to bring up your warmer temperatures. Quite a difference there, quite a shift in what we are seeing underneath these two uh, weather makers. So as we head into tomorrow, Chicago, we warm up. Notice the wind shift a little bit there and then we stay about average 
for our Friday. Into our Saturday, you see the 60s. We're going to be above average all the way up into the Canadian border because we have a big ridge in place, and that ridge allows southerly flow. Sunshine, too. Keep that in mind. Sunshine as well. Into our Saturday, we're talking 25 degrees above average. Get the bathing suits, get the slip and slides, get your little blow up pools, whatever you need here, because it's going to be hot for some of you. Seeing in Omaha, our average at high is 45, and we're going to be at 70 in the sunshine, Cantori. That is significant. There was, I don't know anyone who takes out a blow up pool, but that's the way it is all the time. <laughs> yeah, that is right, exactly. All right, so let's talk about this upper level low. And it is spinning counterclockwise. You see it right there, bringing some snow in and around the uh, Great Salt Lake, the Four Corners getting in on the action as well. And this is going to be pushing east and then south. So if you're traveling here, 2570, it's going to be a wet one for today. Now, it's not going to be excessive snowfall, which you have to be a lot more careful in because usually when it's just light, everyone just continues business as usual, and then you run into more problems because it's pretty slippery out there. Guys? Yeah. All right, so sunny skies, rain, sir. And so is the pollen. And for many allergy sufferers, it's going to be rough. Our partners at Pattern show us why you want to invest in allergy remedies now. I'll try to tell you is we don't need a massive storm system, you know, that will cause a derecho or a hurricane or a severe weather or tornado outbreak. You could have one cell over your house. And so you really always have to pay attention to what's happening in the weather. And if you live in Florida, if you live in Louisiana, you need to pay attention to the system Jim was talking about here over the four corners because this low is going to be riding south with this southern jet. But also this trough here in this jet is going to be pulling that energy south as well. So that's why it's taking this bit of a funky path for a low pressure as it gets pushed down. And you see it'll be absorbed with that energy to the north. So let's have a look at some of our spots here. Shreveport, I mean, it's pretty good timing for us. Can you beat 66 and sunny on a Saturday in March? This is why we live in this. Enjoy it before all the humidity and the heat comes back. There's your rain. It's not going to be a lot, but notice how everything dives down here along the I-10 quarter Friday night. Sadly, it is going to be staying into Florida as we head into our Saturday, but spots like New Orleans, we are going to clear out and cool off. Notice that cooler air. We go from 72 to 66, so there will be a drop, but Saturday, Saturday night, it is going to be lingering into the not-so-sunshine state, Jen. That's for sure, at least for Saturday. Yeah.